how Elon Musk's 700 mile per hour hyperloop concept will become the fastest way to travel. Can you ever imagine traveling from Los Angeles to San Francisco in just 35 minutes? Is hyperloop making this a possible thing? Want to know more about it? Hold on with us. Hyperloop defines a futuristic means of transportation. It is even faster than a Boeing 747 and three and a half times faster than Japan's Shinkansen bullet trains. It's a Hyperloop with magnetic pods moving at more than 1,000 kilometers per hour inside the tube. Let's move forward and learn how Elon Musk's 700 mile per hour Hyperloop concept will become the fastest way to travel on our channel. What is this Hyperloop? A Hyperloop is a proposed high-speed system for both people and goods transit. Elon Musk adopted the word to describe a cutting-edge project based on the VAC train principle first appearance in 1799. Tubes, pods, and terminals are the three fundamental components of Hyperloop systems. A sizable sealed, low-pressure system and the tube, usually a long tunnel. Using magnetic propulsion, the pod is a coach that is essentially free of air resistance or friction while pressuring to atmospheric pressure inside this tube sometimes augmented by a ducted fan. The terminal handles the arrivals and departures of pods. The Hyperloop differs from vacuum trains in its initial design proposed by Elon Musk by depending on internal air pressure to create lift for aerofoils and propulsion. The idea for the Hyperloop originated with George Medhurst in 1799, and it later went by the titles Pneumatic Railway, Atmospheric Railway, and Vac Train. After bringing up the Hyperloop in a 2012 speech, Elon Musk expressed a renewed interest in the technology. Compressed capsules were transported inside reduced pressure tubes in his initial concept, using air bearings driven by axial compressors and linear induction motors. The cost estimates in the white paper were contested by transportation experts, some of whom predicted that the actual cost of a Hyperloop would be several billion dollars more. The technology. For the Hyperloop concept, specially made capsules or pods must travel through a steel tube at a partial vacuum. In Musk's original design, each capsule would float atop a 0.02 to 0.05 inch layer of air supplied under pressure to air caster skis, much like pucks are levitated above an air hockey table while yet permitting higher speeds than wheels can support. The capsules may glide for most of the journey because rolling resistance has been eliminated and air resistance has been significantly decreased. The alpha level idea called for passenger only pods to have a diameter of seven feet, four inches, 2.23 meters, and a top speed of 760 miles per hour. 1,220 kilometers an hour to preserve aerodynamic efficiency. The design suggested that during takeoff and landing, passengers would experience a maximum inertial acceleration of 0.5 G, around two or three times that of a commercial airliner. The proposed California high-speed rail shortens current trip times and lower prices compared to contemporary modes of transportation, despite a new high-speed mode of transport being sought between Los Angeles and San Francisco. This preliminary design study suggests a brand new high-speed method of transportation that would cut the distance between Los Angeles and San Francisco travel time and costs in half. There are also options to expand the transit network to other significant population centers around California. This method uses less energy than any other form of transportation. The Hyperloop comprises various unique parts, including capsule, tube, propulsion, and route. A more extensive system has also been developed, allowing the capsule to carry three full-sized cars and their occupants bearings with a compressed air reservoir and aerodynamic lift support the capsules. The tube is built with steel. The capsules can move in both directions thanks to welding two pipes together in a side-by-side -side arrangement. Pylons are positioned every 100 feet, 30 meters, to support the tube. The tops of the boxes will be covered with solar panels, which will power the system. To accelerate the capsules, linear accelerators are built at various points throughout the length of the tube. The pills have rotors that use linear accelerators to give them momentum. Los Angeles and San Francisco will each have a station. 
Splits in the box will make reaching several stops along the way possible. The tube will be built in the median, and most routes will follow I-5. The Hyperloop is designed to be expandable. The capacity would be 840 people per hour, enough to convey the 6 million passengers who commute between the Los Angeles and San Francisco metropolitan areas each year. This explains why 70% of passengers use the Hyperloop at peak times. The time between capsule departures may be reduced if demand increases due to the Hyperloop's lower cost of travel. Although the Hyperloop's location has yet to be discovered, ZDNet says several businesses have drawn up routes across the US, Europe, India, and other places. Let's move on to find out the actual reason for its high speed. But before that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel Just Tech. How is it this fast? Due to transonic cruising velocities, suspending the capsule within the tube poses a significant engineering problem. Frictional losses and dynamic instability render conventional wheel and axle systems useless at high speeds. Magnetic levitation is a practical technical solution, but the material and construction costs must be lowered. An air-bearing suspension provides an alternative to these traditional choices. By taking advantage of the natural atmosphere in the tube, air bearings provide stability and shallow drag at an affordable cost. The Hyperloop is well suited for externally pressured aerodynamic air bearings because of their extraordinarily high stiffness, which is necessary to maintain stability at high speeds. Reduced gap height between the ski and the tube wall causes a highly nonlinear reaction in the flow field in the gap, which results in high restoring pressures. The added pressure causes the ski to be pushed away from the wall, so it may rise back to its normal ride height. Although a rigid air bearing suspension is excellent for dependability and safety, it could be uncomfortable for the passengers. Each ski is built into an independent mechanical suspension, giving riders a comfortable ride. The capsule may also have conventional deployable wheels that resemble aircraft landing gear for ease of movement at speeds under 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour. These wheels may also be a part of the overall safety system. A sophisticated linear motor system is designed to accelerate the capsule above 760 miles per hour, 1,220 kilometers per hour at a maximum of 1G for comfort to push the vehicle at the needed travel speed. The stationary motor element, stator, which powers the car, will be integrated into the tube. In contrast, the moving motor element, rotor, will be mounted on the vehicle to reduce weight and power requirements. How safe and reliable are these Hyperloops? Safety has been taken into consideration during the whole design process of the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop is a single system that combines the vehicle, propulsion system, energy management, timing, and route, unlike existing means of transportation. The technology resists wind, ice, rain, fog, and other weather conditions because capsules travel in a tightly regulated and maintained tube environment. Because it is a tube part, the propulsion system can only accelerate the capsule to safe speeds within each portion. Few safety concerns are left when human control error and unpredictability are removed from the system. The safety situations listed below range from those specific to the proposed plan to those that should be compared to other modes of transportation. In an emergency, all capsules would communicate directly with station operators, enabling passengers to report incidents, ask for help, and get assistance. Moreover, first aid supplies would be included in every capsule. Less than six billion US dollars is the estimated cost of the Hyperloop passenger transportation system. Both passenger and freight capsules are included in the plus vehicle version of the Hyperloop, estimated to cost 7.5 billion US dollars. You could travel less than an hour from Los Angeles to San Francisco with one-way tickets priced around $100. With the help of this technology, living and working in two different cities might become the norm, while also reducing traffic and pollution. According to Elon Musk's 58-page Hyperloop Alpha paper, which described the concept's design, cost, and safety, the Hyperloop idea gained much traction in 2013. Yet, magnetic levitation, or maglev, the technology that will link it all together commercially, has only lately been perfected. 
Like and share the video if you find this interesting. Watch more tech-related videos on our channel, Just Tech. Remember to subscribe so you won't miss any of our videos.